it's always a bit tricky when there's two people out here because obviously when there's more people there's more noise that you're going to be making obviously but what I'm trying to teach this villager is often out here they don't have much light things like torches illumination which obviously helps when you're going for nocturnal species and what we're doing is we're just moving our way through the corn paddock and um, they've had a couple of invasive animals here particularly one which I'm after tonight which I'm confident I'll get is what they refer to as the cane rat it's a native rat and he infests this area and he's after all sorts of their produce from pumpkins to pineapples sweet potatoes carrots you name it okay shh, shh, shh. generally what I'll do is when I hear something I like to just drop my body weight down to the ground, get my ears as close as I can down to the ground, you know what I mean? If my ears are closer down to the ground, I can put my ear to the ground and I can listen through the ground. These animals, these rats, whether it be rats, mongooses, gannets, civets, any rodent or small mammal, generally what you'll do is at night time you've got to stay very, very quiet and after I do this talking, you'll see, you'll see exactly what sort of mode you've got to get into. It's sort of like, it's sort of like an instinctive, natural hunting mode of night. It's where you stay quiet and you just become one with your surroundings and listen. You listen to the trees, you listen to the crickets, and you listen for all the abnormal noises. Those abnormal noises are animals making those noises. And particularly out here, where there's a lot of dry corn that comes down, you can hear the animals moving through the corn. That's exactly how I'm going to plan my attack. Moving silently, and then you go in for the grab. You keep the light always on their eyes. As long as you've got the light on, the, on, a, on a nocturnal animal's eyes, it gets stunned, it, get, it's, it squints, it gets very confused. It's easy to plan an attack that way. Got him, got him. Woo! There you go. And like I was saying, you just gotta stay really, really quiet, keep your eyes on him, and you just gotta get that, that eye shine with that torch, keep it in his eyes, keep it in his eyes, because as long as you've got that, that light in his eyes, he's just focusing all his attention on where that light's coming from, you know what I mean? That way you can get really close to these animals. These guys here, this here, is what they refer to as the cane rat. And I'll tell you what, it's not that hard to catch if you know what you're doing. Generally what I like to do is, as you saw me before, I'll sit down and I'll just listen. And I'll listen and listen and listen. And I'll just tune into the surroundings. You can hear the crickets in the background. You can hear the owls hoot, 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 hooting. You can hear the cows in the distance. And all I'm looking for and hearing for is a gnawing and this. Hear him gnawing away. Ready? Go, gnaw, gnaw. And that gnawing, generally what he'll be doing out here is he'll be feeding on a variety of food types. Everything from sugar cane to pumpkin. Where well, you've been affected, your crops have been affected. Everything from pumpkins to sweet potato to pineapples. So you can see there's other methods to capture these animals which are less invasive than using traps. Use your ears and your sense of sight. If you've got a little bit of light to help you, makes it a lot better than jumping around in the dark because you don't know what you're going to jump on, you know, you could jump on a mongoose and bang, you've got to fight right on. But this guy here, I'll tell you what, you wouldn't want to get a bite from him either. These guys here, they're carriers. They can carry many different types of diseases and um, a bite from one of these guys could turn into a pretty bad infection. But what these guys will do is at night time is they'll scurry along and um, it's, not just, it's not just the fruits or the crops that they're after, they're also insects as well. So whether it be cockroaches, grasshoppers, crickets, they'll feel around their whiskers, very, very sensitive, and they'll search around in the dirt, scratch, 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 dig it up, boom, bang, they'll swallow it down. Hey, mate, you can just see his little claws. 
It's absolutely perfectly designed for digging. But you have been a bit of a problem to these villagers, haven't you? Yes, you have. You get into the corn, don't you? Yeah, you sure do. Yeah, look at you. All right, mate. Well, there's a couple of things we can do with you. And I'm sure um, the village cats and dogs would like to have a nice feed out of you. But I think you're going to get lucky tonight, and I might give you a bit of a release back out there into the forest. Because this guy here, at the end of the day, he's a native species of rodent. He's not a feral, he's a native. To the villagers out here, yeah, he's seen as a feral, but he is right at home, right here in Africa.